Hello, everybody. Raise the roof. Okay, Anita. Um, have you got your coffee, David? You got your coffee? Ready to work? What's mine? Oh, so mine, this is, this is for Anne. <laughs> That's for Anne. He says, I'm actually a rocket scientist. Well, I'm not a rocket scientist. But I took, I took my son down to JPL um, because one of our um, friends, you know, and what I mean by friends is one of us, one of the members of our community works for JPL. Um, he is also uh, the guitar player in um, the Electric Prunes. How awesome is that? And he hooked me up with Noble Pedals. Remember when we did the review of the OD, I think it's called the ODR1, which is arguably, and we can argue about it, the best overdrive pedal on the market. Um, I know it's very coveted. Um, yes, so I've already had a cup of tea. Now I'm on coffee. I don't know how you guys and girls start off. I like to mix it up. Rocket scientist is Brian May, yes. Well, he's an astrophysicist. Um, anyway, hello, is, how is everybody? Gautier, Walking Air Dogs, Sergio, Alexi, David Merkel. David sent me a... Um, David sent me a very, very nice email. Um, and I must say, it's a good talking point. David is a great keyboard player, and he sent me some stuff of him playing live. And what I love about this community, David uh, Allen Hammond here, another great member of our community. I know so many of you either face to face because of our master classes or, you know, because we interact so often on both inside the academy, on YouTube, in Facebook, now in Instagram, because over the last few days I've been sort of getting into Instagram question stuff. It do, I do get a little inundated because I try to do it while I'm working. Um, so, for instance, yesterday I did ask me a question and my head exploded. So it serves me right for doing that one. Um, but here we go. Um, so, um, yeah, so it's just a wonderful community. Coffee, 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 says John. So why was I mentioning David? Well, I was just thinking about that's the thing about our, our community that I would love to encourage. It already exists and you're already doing this, but collaboration. I want to talk for a second before we get started on this mix about collaboration. There's so many of you here. Um, thank you ever so much, John. Um, there's so many of us here that are musicians, as well as producers, as well as engineers, as well as mixers, as well as songwriters. In fact, probably a large percentage of you are musicians, and you're trying to figure out how do I record and capture my music. So what we've been doing on these mixing streams, for instance, is concentrating, um, is concentrating about... Um, mixing in the box. Everything here, just so you know, and you'll notice we're moving with all the different plugins. And today we've got a surprise for you. We're going to talk about a plug, about some plugins that, um, and this is not sponsored by them, by the way, just to be really, really clear, but we're talking about a different company here that I get asked about a lot. And this is a mix that I have to have done by tomorrow because it's coming out and being mastered by, being mastered tomorrow. So, you're going to see me mix this song in real time, and we're going to be using a plethora of different plugins, but we're starting off with Slate Digital. Now, why Slate Digital? Well, Slate Digital, because I get asked about it a lot. In fact, when I did my first Instagram, Ask Me Anything, lots of people were asking me about affordable ways to get in. And what I love is there's a couple of companies out there that are doing um, subscription-based stuff, and it's becoming more popular. So we're going to start talking a little bit about that. Now, don't get me wrong. This is not an exclusive Slate stream. It is not an exclusive Slate stream. We're going to mix up all the different ones, but we're going to start delving into that because this academy that we have online and this community that we have online is all about helping each other. And point, it's not about like pushing specific things. We don't have banner ads. We're not pushing a particular, you know, product this month for whatever. We're making it really about, you know, everything that's available. So I'm good. Thank you, J-Mac. So getting back to the point, um, I really, um, hey, IJL Audio. Um, 
I listened to your mix. It was pretty spectacular. More coming on that. And by the way, we are announcing the winner, I forgot, um, on Friday of the remix competition. So I apologize for everybody that's been waiting an extra week. But Michael, as you probably remember, um, went through the initial 1,200. I'll say that again. 1,200. That's one, two, zero, 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 zero. 1,200 mixes and remixes. Um, there was a lot of people who did remixes. There was a lot of people who did overdubs. And there was a few people that completely re-recorded stuff. So it was pretty special. 1,200 of them. So we finally got through them. And yesterday, uh, Michael and I took the morning and uh, listened to all of like the, the top mixes and remixes and re-records and shows in our humble opinion what the winners are. I must say, wow, there's so much good stuff. So much good stuff. I mean, incredible. And that's what I love about this because we're breaking down barriers for real. We're breaking down barriers because what we're pointing to is that, yes, there used to be this little tiny echelon of six guys. And I say guys. I can't think of any poor girls that got into this echelon. But there was the six guys in like the mid-90s to the early 2000s, and we can all name them, that engineered, produced, and mixed every single freaking album it felt like. Obviously, one or two people got in around there, but it seemed like you picked up an album, especially in rock, and it was the same producer, same engineer, same mixer. And every album sounded exactly the same. It was all like completely auto-tunal drums. And then we ended up in this world where everybody resents the way those albums sounded. And with good reason. It just got really, really boring, and innovation um, was lost. Now... This world, the world of YouTube, the world of you guys, this, the, the world of Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, the way that we all communicate with each other, everything has shown that there are so many incredibly talented people out there. And Michael did an amazing job of curating it and bringing it down to an amount of songs that I could, my head could explode, wouldn't explode. No, we didn't have 10 interns. We had one Michael go through and spend ages going through it. Yeah, Sylvia Massey was amazing, but I'm talking, you know what I mean, Sylvia was incredible, but she wasn't one of those people that was only, yeah, you know, you can do five seconds of research and figure out the same guys that made all those records. And it's no disrespect to so many incredible other people. Anyway, getting back to the point. So Friday, we're going to announce it. Now, Michael did an amazing job and he was traveling to Germany and to the US. So hi, and so go. Um, so go and uh, um, so go and um, check out In The Mix. I know pretty much all of you have now subscribed to In The Mix as well. Um, so I really, really appreciate that. Um, we, we love supporting these amazing channels. And thank you ever so much, Michael, for doing such an incredible job. Um, yeah, really, really wonderful. So I'm waffling on as per usual. But it's all about collaboration. So I just wanted to point out earlier, I was talking about David, who's a great keyboard player. You are all talking to each, here, each other here. Keep it up. Find out what each other does. You know, inside of the Academy, we have a lot of great collaborations happening. Let's do more of that. Let's do more keyboard players playing with musicians, with drummers, you know, offering their talents up to play in other people's stuff because my example, my actual experience of doing this is all through collaboration. You need to collaborate with other people. Um, that's what it's all about. It's all about, all about collaboration. All right, so what do we have? Let's go over here. Dun, 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 dun. Hey, I'm up here. Okay. So do you remember this song? I'll play you a little bit of it. See if you can remember. Dum -de -dum 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 -da. From El Topo. <laughs> Falling in deep When you tell 
So I let it let it play a little bit. So it's David of the Workday release, and we filmed this and showed you all the overdubs, and you were able in the process this year to download all of the tracks. Now, have you downloaded the tracks? If you have, you could uh, you would if you have downloaded the tracks, you can follow along in real time. You can do whatever you like. But if not, um, Matt who I'm sure is watching can send you a link in here. There's a whole bunch of things with David. David is insanely talented and actually for an independent artist who I work with exclusively. Um, he's one, he, he's done the last three, two, three albums and EPs with me. Um, he's been so incredible. I am now looking, um, I want to do something. So here, here's David on Spotify. Can you see this? You know, I'm going to go down because this is important. Can you see these numbers? Does it work? Can you see that okay? I can read it out to you as well. So, I'll read it out. So this is a fully independent artist um, that I produce. I play instruments with and everything. David's numbers are this. Um, he has a song with just under 2 million plays on Spotify. Another one with 500,000, another one with 961,000, another one with 900,000, and loads of 100,000 plus songs, all independently. He currently has 52,301 monthly listeners for an unsigned artist. And I know many quote unquote signed artists that have less. Um, everything that David has done and everything I've done with him has been completely independent. He is a really, really great artist, um, and it's a joy to work with these kind of guys and girls that do everything on their own. So this is a beautiful song. I'm quite happy with this basic mix that you heard, but it still needs so much other kind of stuff. Um, the multi-tracks are completely free to this song, and you can download them and mix them. So let's start and have a listen to everything here. I'm back up here. Okay, woohoo. What's the whiteboard in the back? That's for an album I'm making with uh, the Matthews, with the Irish boys. Okay, so here are the drums, the live drums with no plugins on them. Okay, I should probably go to a section with the snares playing, shouldn't I? <laughs> cool. 
Cool. So you're getting the idea. That is absolutely, there is no plugins going on that whatsoever. You see they're all disabled and the reverb isn't playing. That is an SM7 on the hats. Uh, one of the best microphones ever made. I did see somebody wrote an article, I can't remember who it was, saying that they didn't like an SM7, which pretty much takes out half of the recorded music in the world. <laughs> it's quite funny. Here we go. You see, when you're talking about tuning the snare down compared with what? Um, you see, it's all about listening to music and context. I'm playing you the drums here to illustrate it. Um, if you have one way of doing it and you like drums one way, you're going to stop yourself being able to be a really good producer. You need to sort of think what's best for the song. Now, I needed something that was like super snappy, you know. <laughs> Sorry, Martin. Yeah, we usually get that one dislike just when we go live. Or, or do something. It's okay. Yeah, they sound good with no processing. So if you go and watch the drum recording video, um, that you basically all of the videos should be, well, it's definitely quality in, quality out. But look, let's talk about this for a second. That kick drum mic is the Rex 640, which I believe is, is fairly inexpensive. It comes with the Lewitt drum mic kit. Then the overheads are a pair of LCT 340s, which are inexpensive. It's a 57 on the snare top, a 57 on the bottom, an SM7, which is a little bit more expensive, but I could use a 57 on the hi-hat. It's very, very simple. Yes, everything in this song was recorded in this studio, and everything, the drums and the vocals were done by David, and all of the guitars and the basses were done by me. So we split up the duties. So with no, just, with no EQ, that's our drum sound. Now, I did add some kick samples in here. I will turn them on and off so you can hear. It's adding some really good air to it. Adding some really good air to it. Now let's do the same thing with the snare. Yes, these are the same tracks, Lisa, that you can get. Um, okay, so the snare's a little loud. Um, this isn't a mix yet, and there's still no compression or EQ. So let's bring, the, let's bring the snare sample down dramatically. Talking of likes and, and unlikes, could you like this please and share it if you can, that would be amazing. So please uh, like, that would be absolutely amazing and share. Um, the beginning, Maggie, as we were just talking about community and we were talking about how it's pretty wonderful. So many of these names down here, um, I know from both the Academy and in general, just from all of you that leave incredibly positive messages on the, on the videos. Speaking of which, go watch the Richard Dodd one. Richard Dodd is a very understated guy. And I know that's not a big video for the younger people who don't know who Richard is, but his resume is insane and he's one of the sweetest guys. So please watch yesterday's video, um, you know, and, uh, and, and like and share. That would be amazing. Okay, um, the SM7B, the best vocal mic under 500 pounds. I don't know if it's the best vocal mic, but it's definitely one, um, one to have in there. Why, is, why are the samples in stereo? Because they have ambience on them. They're not just, have a listen. See, there's some ambience on them. I'm not going to do a huge amount to that. What I'm going to do 
is I'm going to take, we're going to do our usual trick. We're going to take all of our drums, including the samples, and we are going to bust them to a stereo bus. We'll take five and six because it's not being used. Do, 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 do. We're going to take five and six here, create a stereo bus. This is all going to a stereo output, so we'll take an input here, five and six. What I'm now going to do is create a group, including the samples. You see what I did here? And I'm going to call it all, capital A, capital L, L. Oh, you can't see it here, all drums. I like being super, super organized. I just do, you know. I like everything here to mean something. Everything on my left-hand side here to mean something. So here is just the drums grouped together. So just talking about the SM7 for a second, because there's a lot of conversation. I want to, um, when we did the master class in... Um, Nashville. And I, when we did the Ask Scott in Nashville, we took, does anybody remember? Um, I know there's a couple people watching here that were at the masterclass. I believe it was 12 or f I think it was 12 mics. We had the Warm Audio 47. We had the Lewitt 940 LCT. We had a 251. Now we had Blackbird's prized microphones. We had Blackbird's U47, which Bob Clear Mountain said he thought was the best 47 in the world. You can't argue with Bob Clear Mountain. We had an SM7. We had a U87. We had the Slate mic. We had an 80... Um, we had... Uh, um, I can't remember whose version of the 87 was. Anyway, we had all these mics that you're talking about. We had all of these microphones. And the one mic... One microphone that won was the U47. This is a blind test. Blind test. Not an opinionated, you know, already know what to think test, which most tests are. Tests are the blind test, the U47 won. The one that everybody, you know, considers to be the best. A, the U47, arguably, arguably the best microphone and vocal microphone ever made. Number one. And secondly, the one that Bob Clear Mountain considered to be the greatest 47 he'd ever used. I mean, it's in mint condition and it sounds beautiful. That won over every single microphone in a blind test. But in everybody, and there was 20 masterclass guys in nearly everybody's list in a blind test, the SM7 was in everybody's top three. It was number three ranked overall in a blind test. Just so you know, that is how good an SM7 is. This is a blind test. This is not opinions. This is not all of that, you know, stuff. Because, you know, people have opinions on things they've never heard or used. You, you, you see the reviews and somebody underneath is like criticizing and saying it sounds like crap, even though it might not even be released yet. <laughs> You know, they're, they're in a forum telling everybody how they're doing it wrong, but they've never actually recorded with any of the equipment. I mean, that's most, most of the reviews, response to reviews we read. Now, in a blind test, Academy members all put the SM7 in their top three. And it was pretty remarkable sounding. Yes, there's a lot of great mics. Yeah, an RE20 is great as well. But that's a big, big deal. That's a big deal. And we, had, we have a lot of very smart people in there, you know. Okay, so... Um, so we bust those together. Dum, dum, dum. We don't need this. I'm going to clean up a little bit of things that I don't need. That's the overall master there for the whole mix. Um, there is a Tom reverb here, which is not being sent yet. There's a fake room, which is not being used yet. So at the moment, all there is is a drum bus that we just created. So we'll call this drum bus. Let's have a listen. Yep, Earl B was there, SM7. We were all amazed that it was in everybody's top three. Yeah, Adam says, I haven't listened to it, but it sounds like crap. Yeah, exactly. I don't remember what the number one, what number two was. Does anybody remember? Do you remember, Earl, what was number two? U47 was number one. Number three was SM7, but I don't remember what the number two one was. I don't think it was the 251. I don't think it was the 251. Uh, I think it wasn't a C12. It was... 
I don't remember what it was. Oh, one other really, sorry to be on a tangent. One other really, 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 really important thing that we learned. Earl will remind us of this. One of the most important things that we learned was we had two different reactions on how a mic sounds based on these two things. How did it sound in the track and how did it sound soloed? What do you think the problem was? Well, the problem was in the track that microphones with incredibly smooth top end won because all of the other frequencies weren't being suck, sucked up. Soloed, the ones that were a little brighter tended to get a higher ranking. So the U47 in the track was amazing, was smooth, and we could boost the high end, and it sounded airy and big and beautiful. But soloed, some of the cheaper mics seemed to sound pretty good in solo. But as soon as you put them in a track, all you heard was and you just felt like you had to run like three different DSs. That's the thing with the cheaper mics. The only cheaper mics that I believe that kind of won, I don't really remember, was basically the SM7. The SM7 was the only mic that, that was under, you know, $1,000 that just was like, wow, that blew us away. Remember, this was a blind test. None of us, including me, knew which one was which. The um, Lowell, the, uh, the, the amazing assistant engineer at Blackbird, randomized all 12 mics, maxed the volume, matched the volume as close as he could, and then put it on faders on the console, 1 through 12, and we just did this and unmuted and it took us about half an hour going through everything. Sometimes people ask to hear something again. Everybody got a chance to hear everything. So there you go. God bless America. All right. So yeah, that's a pretty darn good thing. Now, the only thing I'm really lacking before I go on is probably a little bit of snare verb. Now, those of you that know the Andy Wallace trick and hear me talking about it all the time will know that Andy likes to use the... Not the close mics, but use the sample for some verbs. Let's have a listen to our samples. That's kind of nice. Listen to the other one. It's a little ringy for me. And that's very ringy. So I think if I'm going to take one, it's going to be this one. So, as you can see, the snare verb is set up at 77, 78. So let's take, and this is standard for me, it could be something else. So let's find 77, 78 and send to it. Too short for me, far too short. I like the fact that the high end is there. So for me, three quarters of a second is one of my favorite times for a snare based on this tempo. Now what we can do and I know a lot of you know about this, is measure how long the decay is from one beat to another. So let's have a quick look. It's actually quite accurate. But So if I do this between kick and snare on average, it's telling me it's 0.944. So let's maybe go up a little bit, not quite a second. Let's go up to like... So we're matching the time. I don't know if you can see that well. Um... Here it is. There you go. I forgot the quick key. Can you see that better? So we've gone up to about 0.87. A little bit less than a little bit less than a second. So we've now matched the decay somewhat to the tempo. I could maybe bring it up just a little bit more. The reason why I say that is you can actually go a little bit over the length of it because the decay is so quiet at the end there. If that's the absolute cutoff point of 0.92 of a second, obviously by about 0.8, you don't hear the reverb anymore because there's so many other things going on. So I could actually probably go up a little bit more. So let's just go up past the 0.94. Let's have a listen. That's good. It's a little, um, it's maybe a little aggressive for what we want, maybe. And I've probably taken the high end down a bit. So if you see here on our reverb, see what I've done? I've pulled down the high end a little bit, but that's probably too much. So I'm going to bring that back up.
I've just flattened it back out. So now it's flat. But I've gone in here at about we can we can put some body back in. Here it says 167. Just to my ears, maybe a little higher. So it's quite aggressive still. I could always shape it. I've got a gate here, which is actually to control the decay. We could get rid of that. Now what that's doing is it's making the snare sample itself go ka ka. Have a listen with and without it. Do you know what I mean? I'm taking the snare sample and I'm actually shortening how much of the sound enters the reverb. So the snare is like bap, bap, as opposed to ba, ba. Listen to it without it on. It's subtle. It's subtle. But can you hear the difference? I'll play it for a few seconds because this is that world that as a beginner or even maybe even maybe as an intermediary, this might seem very subtle. But have a listen. It's very subtle. It's almost too subtle to care about, to be quite frank. Sometimes there's like stuff you do which improves it. Sometimes there's absolutely nothing. You know what? I'll leave it. I'll leave it available in case I want to manipulate afterwards. But at the moment, I've just bypassed it, but it's still available. Okay, here's the MV2. The MV2 is, um, yeah, John, the difference is negligible. That's why I bypassed it. Not even going to worry about it. So let's drop everything back in to hear what our reverb's doing. Yeah, exactly. Um, exactly, Bernard. I'm not, or Bernard, I'm not sure where, which country you come from, but either Bernard or Bernard. I, I'm not trying to gate the reverb so it goes, I'm just trying to control. In this instance, I didn't need to, but I'm just trying to control the sound that is triggering the reverb. Now, the, the mix contest is not postponed. It, the, the winner is going to be announced on Friday. Winners. Now I'm going to listen to it with everything, obviously. And so will we do. But the best will remain. And that's me next to you. So whatever the weather, wind, rain, or sunshine, we'll face it together. I like what's going on. I do. I'm not like completely and utterly in love with the snare itself. It's interesting because do you notice that the snare in the track sounds so different to its solo? Here's just the snare elements together. I like that spank that I'm getting from the, I love what's going on there. You know, the spankiness of the snare in the track all the high end is being eaten up by everything. So this is where we get into that strange world of over-exaggerating. So what I'm actually going to do is bus these to another bus. Okay, so now all my snares are going to an individual bus. So let's create, we're going to create a stereo one because we're folding in our ambient snares. So we're folding in our ambient snares. I'm grouping them all together. I don't always do this. Quite often I'll group the live snare independently, but in this instance I'm going to group all of the snares together. There's no one way to do anything. So now this group is going to go obviously to our live, our drum. Okay and it's going to come in on 21, 22. So 
So now that is a combination of those samples that are low, mixed in, obviously calling it snare bus, mixed in with um, the live snare. So let's have a listen again. It's got snap, it's got punch, the reverb's super mid-rangey with a bit of top-end bite, but it doesn't have the smush that I want. It doesn't have that boof, that kind of smushiness. It's all very snappy and great, which is fantastic, don't get me wrong, but it's not quite what I was looking for. So I'm gonna go, yeah, let's go and get an SSL channel here. Let's do, do some similar things. I'm high passing up to 70. I don't need any kick bleed in there. It's absolutely fine. But I'm going to go down to around about 100 ish and boost. I like that. Um, I want to also just go up to about, here I am, about 9K. Let's have a listen. So what I'm hearing now is like, I like it. But I'm not, I know that, but personally, I know that body's going to get eaten up. So if I put it in the track. It's getting there, it's starting to feel natural, starting to feel good. But I'm I'm not afraid to treat things a little differently. So let's see what we've got going on here. Here is a pretty standard, well, this was from earlier, pretty crazy snare EQ. So what I'm doing is I'm bringing out some mid-range, about 2K, I'm doing some 6K and above, and it's just adding a bit more snare. Let's throw in the snare bottom. So the only thing is, is my snare bottom has got a little bit of kick bleed. So what am I going to do? Well, let's check this out. There's no four on the floor in this song as far as I remember. Let's go check. Why am I asking? You're going to see. Let's have a listen. No four on the floor. Why is that important? If there was four on the floor, it means the kick and the snare would be playing on the same time. You get bump, ga, bump, ga, bump, ga. Doesn't happen in this song. So what does that mean? That means I can have some fun. I'm going to take my snare bottom and I'm going to take, go to a good old fashioned R comp here. I'm going to side chain. Do, 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 do. Let's take a bus that we know isn't being used. 128. And I'm going to take a kick sample. Have a listen. Why am I using a kick sample? Because I don't want bleed. I want to sidechain my compressor. This is another good thing for using samples, even if you're not really hearing them. So I'll go down to 128. Dum de dum dum dum. I'm going to send. And I'm actually going to send it pre fade. So no matter what I do with that, whether I turn it up or turn it down, it's still going to go into it. Okay, so why am I showing you this? Watch. Let's, let's go out of that. Let's go to the snare bottom. The R comp is on the snare bottom. What is the problem with the R comp, with the uh, snare bottom? Listen. A little bit of too much snare bleeding. I mean, too much kick bleed in there. I love what that does. Not only does it turn down every time the kick plays, I love that oof 
sound. Listen to it. Hopefully, you don't have to crank too much. I'm going to turn up the snare bottom a little bit. But listen what it's doing. Every time the kick plays, it compresses the snare top. Does that make sense? I love it. I love it. It just kind of adds this boof, boof, this little beautiful kind of, you know, oomph underneath. It's really fantastic. So let's put it back in the mix of just the drums, first of all. Why does the R comp only affect the kick? Because I'm using a side chain function here. See the little key? Keying it from bus 128. And bus 128 is coming from a kick sample up here. That makes sense? So I'm using a kick sample, which is clean, doesn't have any other bleed, and I'm sending that to the snare bottom. Here it is. If you haven't already, please, 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 um, like and share. Okay, so our first giveaway of the day is going to be about, well, David. Now, David, um, we did a course with Ken Sluter, and Ken Sluter mixed one of David's songs, and I also mixed it. So you're going to see Ken's in-the-box mix and my mix, and get all the multi-tracks. It's a really really, really complex session that we recorded at Sunset Sound. We did tons of overdubs. We have hand claps and stomps and background vocals and piano tracks and some of the best musicians in the world. And it is going to be amazing for your resume. Amazing. And it's a song that has hundreds of thousands, hundreds of thousands of plays. So this is a big deal. It's a really good course. And you can win that here. So as usual, um, I'll... Lisa, I'll explain that again in one second. So uh, don't worry, I'll explain it again because I know it's important. So as usual, I want to know about you. Um, yes, exactly, Real Raven. But as you know, if you were paying attention to what I was talking about, I said that there's no point in this song. Is there any four on the floor groove? So if there was a four on the floor groove, the kick would have covered the snare, but there isn't in this song. Um, this is a song I produced, recorded, came up with the beat, worked on it with, uh, with the singer who's also played the drums. So I, I'm very knowledgeable of this. If, if for you, you, you would just have to listen to the song to make sure that didn't happen with you. Um, okay. Um, you know, it doesn't always work. If there's a four on the four groove or, or the drummer's playing the kick and the snare, which isn't that prevalent in rock and roll, definitely more prevalent in disco and definitely more prevalent in EDM, but in rock and roll, it isn't as prevalent. Now, you can do the same trick using gates. I don't like the sound of that. I'll cover the side chaining again in a second. Okay, so let's talk. I want to talk about, um, I want to know more about you. That's the most important thing. So we have a lot of great people in here. Well, how about this? Who, because there's confusion and we can cover it. Who uses side chaining? Who used this side chaining? And if you do, and this is to win the free course, these multi tracks are downloadable for free, but there's a course that we did recorded at Sunset Sound and here, and mixed here, hybrid on the SSL, with and then mixed entirely in a box by Ken Sluter. So an amazing two chances, two different mixes, all the multi tracks, some of the best musicians in the world. Have you used multi of side chaining? And if you haven't, please say, no, I haven't. You can still enter the competition. We always choose people whether they say yes or no. And if you have, what do you use it on? Paul, what do you use it on? Um, Darko, what do you use it on? Valium, what do you use it on? Agro, what do you use it on? Baz, what do you use it on? I want to know what you're using it on. X, um, B Royal X said side check, um, kick and bass all the time. Duck Tom's bass guitar based on vocals. Nice. Um, no side chaining, side chain reverb tails as well. That's nice. Haven't, not very much. Um, use it as an EDM client. 
Have not. I do on delays. Um, Real Raven says side chaining to take my base from the kick. Um, I have mostly on uh, depends. Do for ducking. Better best for ducking. Side chaining keys for mid mids from the singer. Lots of side chaining here on snares, kick trigger, and bass guitar. Bass guitar. Um, I use it with the vo uh, waves vocal leveler. This is really really cool. On reverb and side chaining vocals, says Anne. David says very often on drums and guitars mainly. Guitar solos, that when the vocals come in, very nice, Martin. I do that all the time. Um, yes, on delay, ducking on vocal effects, says Lisa. Okay, so while, while Matt is choosing somebody, let's talk about this again. So let's have a listen. What I'm going to do is you'll, you'll see that the compressor is only coming on when the kick plays. Cool. Now, for me, the verb still is a little mid-rangey. It just is. So I'm actually going to move everything up here. It's just a little mid-rangey. And I'm going to put an EQ before it. Before it. It's going to go in and grab a simple EQ. Just do this. That was it. Just a little 3 dB at 8.5K, really super wide, so I just just gave it a little bit more high end. <laughs> Tempted, quite frankly, to go in there and do a little bit of this. In general, with all of my snares, you know, and I'm doing it on the snare bus here, but in general, I'm tempted just to give a little bit more low. Let's do a little bit of compression here. We haven't done that yet. And you'll notice I'm listening to the whole drum mix, not the snare on its own. Immediately gives me the SSL spank. Listen to it. interesting I'm still not getting the body that I want so that means that sometimes uh, you've got to treat things individually so I'm gonna have a listen to the snare top that has the body I want so I wonder if we're getting a little phase cancellation because of the low end on these things you know it's pretty accurate it's pretty accurate for considering the different things in here it seems that this one That's giving us a lot of, so I'm just going to go in there and quickly whack on an EQ. You know, I'm going to go for my Mac DSP on this one because I like the way that their analog EQ sounds. So we can just go down and have a look here. We can just go and pick filter bank. That was a huge difference immediately. That really helped because this is the this is the sample that's going to the reverb. This isn't all the drums together. So now I'm doing a little less boost on the high end because I'm getting what I want. Now I'm liking it on its own, but of course, let's listen to it in the mix. Oh, sorry. 
I'm boosting around about 100 on the snare. Somebody was asking me there. Um, but I'm also, you know, I'm also high passing at around 55. I can actually come up a little bit. Oh, sorry. It took me this long to come home to you. My one true love forever. Great. So I'm digging this. I'm digging this. Haven't done anything to the drum bus. Still very natural, except for that snare verb. So we've got a very natural sound so far. So let's get our drum bus. Let's have some fun with the drums. I'm going to go back and use an SSL style. I'm going to go for a G. Have a listen. First things first, have a listen for high passing. I'm going to tighten up the low end a little bit. I don't need anything around about 20. Is there anybody listening through studio monitors? Are you listening through studio monitors? I know there's quite a few of you that do. We're trying to tame the dynamics of my vocals so I don't blow up your studio monitors. We took out my low end. But listen, I can hear it on my blue headphones. Even on my little blue headphones, it's not about that I heard 20 hertz disappear. Of course I don't. I cannot hear 20 hertz in these. In these. Maybe, 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 maybe if I cranked a schnizzle out and blew up the drivers. It's not about hearing the 20 hertz. This is where the big discussion and the stupidity lies. What is it is about hearing is taking out that low end crap. Yes, through JBLs. Okay, listen to what happens to the mix on your kick drum. Listen to the kick drum with this is with it off. So can you see me up here? Everybody see me? I'm going to do this and point up when I turn it on and you will hear the kick drum get louder. Here's it off. The kick just gets that tiny bit louder because it's not all that low end is no longer eating up my, you know, the unnecessarily eating up all of my mix. In fact, if I want to get super, super anal, I can go into my live kick. Let's have a listen. I actually want to have some fun with that. So let's see what our REQ is doing. This is crazy. This was from a different setting when I was using two kick drum mics. So I do not need that. I don't need the kick drum to do that. I've got those other things. So what I'm going to do is turn that off. Go to good old fashioned REQ. Do two things. High pass. <gasps> high pass. I'm going to high pass about 38. I'm going to go to 60. Oh my God, look. So I'm going to tighten up a little bit. I'm going to go to an REQ4 just because I'm going to pull out some of that, those low mids, about the 3400 area, which we all know is pretty common. I like that. It's giving me a little bit of air. Now, let's have a quick listen. So why don't we do this? You hear that the kick head is resonating. That's my Rex 640, the Lewitt microphone on the kick head. You hear it's resonating every single time I play a snare. Boom, 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 you hear that boom, boom. 
Okay, so what are we going to do? You guessed it. We're going to sidechain. So let's put that here. Let's go and grab another compressor. Dum -dum -dum -dum. And let's take it from, yes, you guessed it, one of the snares. Let's choose a snare. How about this one? Bit of ambience on it. That's fine. I mean, yeah, let's, let's use the same one here. Aggressive, but it's an inherent part of our sound. So let's use one that's actually working. So let's find, make sure we find a bus that isn't already being used. Ha 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 ha, he says. So 63, key input. So that's from the other day when we had something from a previous mix that had been imported. And uh, that's one of the problems with moving quickly um, and not checking. The offending person. All right, so I'm sending now from the snare. And I'm going to put it in for those of you in pre-fade, meaning no matter what I do, um, haven't done anything on the mix bus yet. No, nope, nothing on the mix bus that hasn't been done. So let's have a listen to our live kick. I mean, that's pretty obvious what it's doing, and I love it. Hey, not you can totally rename your, your mix of buses, your buses. You can go through those buses and make them whatever you want to be. I'm not doing that, and that's the reason why, you know, mistakes happen, because I don't want, I want people to learn how to do things themselves. So if I have everything already set up, it, it doesn't help me teach you, does it? So... Um, yeah, Baz, it is boomy, but it's one part of the kick drum sound. Isn't that amazing? Andrew. Andrew. I'm, I have to use the bathroom in a second. I might have you take over. <laughs> so... What we did, you see what it did? Can you all hear that? I'll do it one more time. Here's it off. Absolutely. I love what it does because it actually adds this pa, 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 pa. I love that energy it's adding. So put the whole thing together and we get this. Very, 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 very tempted to just do a little control on those kick drums before. Okay, so in the meantime, will you please like and share? Can you like and share? And I'm going to run to the restroom because I've had too much JPL coffee. Okay, so, and Andrew, who is our unwilling, I mean willing, I mean uh, humble, I mean <laughs> assistant, is going to take over. And you can ask him anything you like about what it's like working with, for the limey. Here you go. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, how's everybody doing? Dun, dun, dun. All right, now you, can, you guys can see me. So uh, any questions about um, my time here at Spitfire, Produce Like a Pro? Coffee, not tea. I... I actually don't drink that much coffee, just on uh, usually Monday mornings, but I, I use, usually try to not to do, uh, drink coffee. This delay is kind of messing me up. Do I like pizza? I love pizza. Yes, I, lo I like it a lot. Um, da -da -da -da. Can I make a proper cup of tea? Um, probably not, uh, to be honest, um, because I don't drink coffee. Um, it's hard for me to like know if I make a good cup of coffee, but Warren says it's good. So I just continue what I do. Um, 
blink twice <laughs> if I need help. I'm good. Um, did I move to LA for this gig? No, um, I've lived in California the majority of my life, um, but I grew up in Glendale, so it's kind of been, um, kind of been in the area. And then I went to Cal State Northridge, so it's kind of like 13 miles from the studio, which isn't that bad. Um, generally, it's like 30 minute drive. Um, dun dun. What's my main task at the studio? Uh, I kind of do a lot of different things. Um, I think the main thing that I do right now is kind of doing a lot of the uh, bigger videos. So I edited the uh, Brian Hewitt video, the Welcome to 1979 video. Uh, those are a lot longer videos and there's a lot more B-roll. And so um, I kind of have more time because Eric's always engineering stuff here with the artist. And so I have more time and um, a little bit more skilled than the interns that we have currently. Um, to give that more time and, and make it a better video. Um, but I also do a little bit of the publishing stuff and kind of whatever Warren asked me to do. Um, it's a uh, kind of have to learn a lot of uh, different tasks. So like right now we're trying to see if we can get uh, a booth for, for NAM this upcoming year. So I've been in contact with them. Um, is a hot dog a sandwich? I, I, I think so, I guess. <laughs> What's the most interesting thing you've worked on? Ooh, um, I, I really need to answer that one. I'm, I'm gonna drink my coffee uh, <laughs> and let him answer that. That's that's really hard. I I honestly really like doing the uh, the tour videos and actually being there with the people. Um, like I said, the ones that we did at Nashville, uh, that that was really fun. How did I start working with Warren uh, or Warrant? Um, <laughs> So I actually went to school with Eric, and we were uh, acquaintances, and we had like a project or two together. And then about a year after we both graduated, he reached out to people in that uh, in that class uh, to see who wanted an internship, and I reached out, um, and then I started interning last January, um, and then I've just been here um, since then. So ma mainly it's just been uh, through Eric. Um, can I find an intern like Andrew in Atlanta? You know, you just you gotta put a put a posting looking for an, uh, interns named Andrew. Um, you'll you'll probably find some. Have I ever accidentally broken something in the studio? Uh, no, uh, I don't think so. <laughs> um, not that I remember. Um, da, da, da. when can I have my job? It's my job. <laughs> um, are there any outtake or blooper videos? Um, I mean, there's always outtakes and bloopers, but, uh, we usually don't add them in or keep them to the side. Maybe, maybe in the future we'll have maybe like a behind the scenes blooper outtake video. Um, Am I a musician? Yes, I play guitar and I used to play violin. Um, I kind of let the violin on the back burner and then I know a little bit of piano and starting to learn drums. I'm, I'm still still getting there. Um, who stole Warren's socks? Warren, what happened to your socks? <laughs> um, I think it was probably one of the interns, you know. We kind of just throw them outside it gets cold so they uh they need some socks to warm up do i like the da reason i've actually i think i've only used it once for like a school project i can't really say because it was like trying to make like a synth pad something like that i mean it was it was pretty cool but i i can't really say for sure um, my favorite type of music, I like alt rock, indie rock. Um, produce like an Andrew, I like it. I'll, I'll start my own channel. <laughs> um, do I tune all of Warren's guitar strings? Uh, I usually don't. Um, but we have, we have a lot of tuners. Yeah, usually it's, it's when, 
the the artist needs the instrument that I would grab it, make sure it's in tune, and then hand it to them. So then the artist isn't always tuning it. Or I try to, like, get in the ballpark. My favorite band. Um, that changes all the time. But I really like From Indian Lakes. Um, their newest album was so-so, but I like uh, Absent Sounds. Um, I also like... Hell the Sun, I the Mighty, um, what's that one band? Cage Elephant. Those are, yeah, those are what I listen to. Anita has all the socks, Warren. So you have to, you have to go to her to grab all your socks. Has my socks? <laughs> you have my socks? How did you get my socks? Oh, I see what you're saying. Because, because I'm always wearing uh, flip flops, or as that. Uh, as our, as our Aussie friends always call them, they call my flip-flops thongs. Um, she Studios wants to know if you're single. Are you single, uh, Andrew? No, I... Apparently, I'm it's, it's <laughs> Marvel or DC, says Adam. Marvel or DC, Marvel all the way. Oh, he said Marvel all the way. I thought it was sort of split. I thought that stuff was always split. No, Marvel, like... So you didn't grow up like liking Superman and Batman? I mean, I like the cartoons, but the movies have been just all Marvel. Like, wow. The DC ones have been kind of... See, I, I have kids, so I like it all equally. Um, okay, so at, John says, great job. Okay, so where do we leave off? Well, we left off with me wanting to do a quick kick bus. Quick kick bus. I was feeling like the kick wasn't being articulated enough, and I just wondered if I should just do this. So we're taking a, taking a bus that isn't being used yet. And we're going to send that to five and six. So back in our main bus here. And we're going to input it on 23, 24. And now let's just listen to the kick on its own for a second. This is kick samples and live kick. There's no shortage, so it's called this kick sub. There's definitely no shortage of attack on that, although once in the mix, it does get eaten up a little bit. So we're going to hear that in a second. OK, so let's just go and pick an old favorite. We'll go to a G. Again, I'm going up to about 20. Don't want it there. What? What? There's another reason why we can't hype us. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Eric is gracing us with his presence. Good Eric is gracing us with his presence. He decided he thought that he would just bespoke his, his presence on us at uh, 11.41. You know, yes, please. Oh, yeah. Got 20 minutes because Christina's in in 20 minutes. So, he, he, yeah, okay. So thanks. I like that. Difficult to see in the reflection of your eyes. Thank you. Anyway, so what I did is I've, cr I've created this group on the kick. I'm high passing at 20. Now, all the joking aside, there's another reason why we high pass is because when I boost, these high passes and low passes aren't this. They aren't like completely. Look at this little logo here. It gives you an idea. That's what it looks like. That's what it sounds like. It's not getting rid of everything. It's not a brick freaking wall of nothing below that. So why do you high pass? You high pass because you want to control the low end boost. So now if I go down to say about 60 ish on my kick, it's going to shape the low end better. I mean, listen to that low end. Let's bring in a little compression. Let's bring in a little compression there. You can see everything better now. Let's bring in a little compression.
See, if there's one thing that SSLs do is that snap. They just compress in a way that just does everything for you. And the default setting here is pretty darn good. Ah, there it is. Did you hear what happened there? Listen to this kick. I'm going to, see here, I'm going to take this cut that I did at about 350. And it's defaulting in the middle there on the cue. So I didn't change the cue, it's just the default. And listen to how the kick drum sounds with that 350 cut. Oh, it's so nice with that cut in it now. That's what I was looking for. Now, I'm going to listen to my samples, and we're going to do the Andy Wallace trick. That's nice. That's pretty controlled. So why do I want that sample? Well, I'm going to use that sample, the controlled one, to go to, yes, you guessed it, our kick room. So let's go here. I chose that because it doesn't have a huge amount of low end. Still, I'm going to EQ going into that. So I'm just going to take and find uh, just the REQ, and I'm going to high pass the EQ. Why are we doing this? Well, we don't want all of that low end buildup on our kick drum. We do not want that oom, oom, oom. Um, we don't want it. So here you can see I've gone up to 200 hertz, and I'm high passing. I don't like that, pa, 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 that kind of double slap. So I'm actually going to do the same thing and I'm going to low pass it. I'm going to go to about here. I like that. So now you see I've high and low passed it like this. And now it's got a nice control air on the kick. In the whole drum mix. The only thing I'm worrying about or wondering about is what's going on in my overheads. Let's have a listen. There's one room mic. This is in a this my drum room is about the size of a normal small bedroom. This is what anybody can do. Anybody can do. Haven't had a chance to use Catewalk. There's not too much low mids in there to worry about, but you can see here what I've done as a standard EQ is this. That really helped the low end. Now talking to room mics, let's have a listen to that. I'm not sure if that has much use. What that is, is that is a vocal mic in the room. That's probably the 940. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for that townhouse, because you know I've been digging that. So let's, let's go to the townhouse. Uh, 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 um. Let's go to the townhouse compressor. Oh, it's under the... It, there it is. And let's have some fun with it. Okay, I'm adjusting the attack here. So I'm going to go from 1 to 30. 
And let's see what sounds like it's just bringing that snap back. We've gone to the release time here as fast as we can. Now it's messed with the ratios on limit, or at least as much as an SSL style compressor will do, which is 10, 10 to 1 ratio. So it takes 10 dB of to allow 1 dB through. So you need it will compress basically for every 1 dB that it goes over zero, it's compressing 10. I mean, that's a dumb way of explaining it. That's the only way I can think of simply explaining it. Okay, so let's have a listen to the attack. It's interesting. So what do I want it to do? Here, set to one, it's not getting that pa 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 pa, but it is giving me a lot of room. But the 10 was pretty tasty as well, so let's go to the 10 on the attack. So what do we want? What do we want? Do we want it to be pap, pap, that SSL? Have a listen. I think the only way to find out is to put it in the mix. It's going to be subtle. I'll bring it up a bit, exaggerate it. Have a listen to it in the mix of the drums only. Something's not returning quick enough when I'm on that for the kick, that the kick doesn't feel even to me. When I'm on here, I don't know if you guys and girls can hear that, but there's a little bit of low end which isn't coming back quick enough. I think that could be some of our side chaining going on. Not on a snare top, I'm not worried about that, but maybe on our kick. So, let's just have a quick look on our kick here, and just, let's make the release time a little faster. No, it seems to be fast enough. I can hear it, so it's not that that's at fault. It might just be a performance thing, in which case I might want to slightly increase the compression. So let's have a look at the, this is the group, the kick group. All right, so I'm going to speed up the release time a little bit, just a bit. There you go. Do you hear that? Bah, bah. The low end and the kick volume remained the same now. Does that make sense? So I've taken the release time here and I've shortened it so that when the double kick comes in, the compressor isn't already holding it down. So when the second kick hits, it's not keeping the volume down. Does that make sense? You need to adjust your release time so when it goes bap, bap, it just so boom, ga, boom, boom. That second boom isn't already squashed down. Make sense? So the compressor now is releasing fast enough for it to come and catch and let enough of the attack come through on the second of those two kicks. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, much, much better for me. All right, let's do another giveaway. This is a giveaway for David's course. Please, as ever, please subscribe. Please hit the like button. If you're new here and you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. We do a couple of these a week, every single week. We give away stuff every single week. Um, 
Well, and they're in a stereo group, so it, the, it doesn't matter about the kick bleed because I'm quite aggressive on the high pass, so it's going to affect both. Okay, so, um, and also it's negligible in the overall mix. Um, so, what do I want to know about you? I want to do another giveaway. Are you going to hear six, eight your whole day? One, two, go, go, two. Yeah, David, you can still uh, longer and you can tune in here. The monthly $17 in the academy. A lot of people here are in the academy. Um, um, yeah, I agree. Lem says if it was lower in the mix, it would be better on the, on the 10 on the attack. But I, do, I like it for that extra energy because it's adding a little grit to it. And we haven't even paralleled yet. So I want to know a little bit more about you. Um, what we, everybody here has answered, um, has been talking about, um, you know, what, whether they've side chained or not. Um, what I want to know, what is your favorite drum mix trick? Is it parallel? Is it distorting something? What is your favorite trick? Is there something you've learned? And if you don't have a favorite trick, you can say, I don't have a favorite trick yet, or I'm still learning or something like that. You know, it's it's one of those things. We, we we need to, this is about community. And if you don't have a favorite one, the prize Maggie is the, this not this course, because these are all free. You can download this. We have a course with both me and Ken Sluter, the amazing engineer, Ken Sluter, mixed David, one of David's songs that we recorded at Sunset Sound with tons and tons of overdubs. You can get that as a course. And that's the prize. Okay, so everybody's telling us what, what they're doing. Parallel compression and saturation, saturation with decapitator, New York compression, sans amp, um, parallel compression, wave smack. If you don't have one, have a trip, you can still. Still experimenting is a good answer. Oh, you like the gun samples and the snare. Well, those are from Dave Jordan. That's the drum samples used on uh, Alice in Chains um, albums on Dirt. That's the drum samples from Dirt. Subkick mic. Um, parallel distortion, still learning, that's great. Okay. I want, still want to shape that. So what I'm going to do on my kick sub is I'm going to open up and do a little little transient designer on the whole thing. I'm deciding I might, I think I might put it after what I'm doing with the SSL. So I'm going to go down here to the SPL. Do, 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 do. So let's go and use a little transient designer. Here we go. I'm going to try it before and after, but here's after. There you go, great example. Um, Yoros said, I'm a beginner, and they want a copy of the uh, course. Thank you ever so much. I like that. It doesn't just have, there's no right answer. Yeah, well, Dirt, if you, if you download my free samples, which Matt will give you a link to now, I'm sure, the, the drum samples, you sign up for the email list to get them. We have the Dirt snare samples. They, Dave told me it's an AK-47 shot in the desert. Hmm. Still, still not quite digging it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna like do a little uh, finagling here. It's getting there, but it hasn't quite got the attack that I want all the time. So I'm gonna go. Uh, this I, transient design is your friend. So let's have a let's shape this live kick a little bit.
that seems to be really, really, really helping me there. You see, what it is, is like when a drummer plays, every drummer does this to a different degree. The, the greater the drummer, they still, they do a little bit. What happens is when they're playing single kicks, they might lay the, the, the kick pedal onto the kick drum just for a nanosecond longer because it's like boom, crack, boom, boom. But see what happens when they play the double. What does that mean? That means that even though it's shorter, it has more low end in it. Why does it have more low end in it? Because the kick pedal has to come back quicker and go for a second hit. My artist is here. Hey! I'm doing a live stream. You're on my live stream. Oh, I'm your live stream? Oh. Yay! Christina Holmes is here. Awesome. So that second, that second kick hit, I'll be finished in a minute. <laughs> I'm running a little late. It's my oh, fault. No I'm always running a couple of minutes late. Um, but um, so basically that second kick hit, there's that one and two kick hit, especially the one of the two has a little bit more on it. You can use the R bass, David. I'm not a big fan of that early on. That's a sort of like right when I'm going to, we're always beginners, Paul. Great question. But that's really fixed it for me. So let's listen to the whole mix. Day will change. It does, Jake. So what's happening? The head is getting dampened because they're laying their kick pedal in a little bit. Every drummer does it. It will change, and so will we too. But the best will remain, and that's me next to you. Yeah, it's just a little tighter, a little bit more pop, you know. What I do want to do is add some sub in there, but we'll get to that in a little bit. There's another way of doing that. Thank you, Sean. I'm glad you enjoyed the song. If you haven't already, download these multi-tracks. And now we're going to wrap up, so we're going to do one more giveaway. Don't worry, on Tuesday we're going to open up this song and like finish, uh, sorry, on Thursday and finish it up. I'm actually going to finish it before then, but we're going to do more to it. This room here, I'm not, I'm not digging it entirely. I love what the townhouse is doing. I want to use and abuse this. So what I'm going to do, because I think it's clouding up the popness of it, but adding some energy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick a reverb on it. We haven't used my fake room at all yet, and I don't know if we will. We might get to it in a second. I'm going to go to Mac DSP's Revolver, which if you haven't used yet, is a really, really good compressor. We're, I'm sorry, compressor. <laughs> really, really good reverb. We love this one a lot. Um, very underrated, great reverb. So what I was doing was messing around with that. I don't want the super lows. This low frequency color is great. If you want to go crazy and bring some low end in, look, go to the 40 and boost this. So if you want bottom, here you go. 
So you're in some kind of bottom room. I mean, that's obviously, could, I could tweak it more, but you get the idea. Make it larger. Very bottomish like that. So, but we don't want that. I'm trying to get it out of the way a little bit of the low end. Yeah, it's too middly for me. I'm not a big fan of this mic in this situation. Oh, I love uh, Peter Gabriel. So this is without it. With. It's real, but it's not pop enough for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it all the way down. Okay, and I'm going to listen to the mix and I'm going to bring it in to where it feels good. See what I mean? It's barely in. It's I, I heard it coming in. If you don't, that's quite all right. I totally understand because um, I'm used to listening to this this kind of thing. But all I'm really hearing now is I just want to articulate these toms. Look what's going on. They're not panned. Let's pan them around. Okay. Couple of things could come up dramatically before we do anything. Starting tonight. When the worst is at hand, when good luck starts to land. Thanks everybody for the compliments. I love being able to do this in real time and talk to you about it because you can apply all this information. And most courses, as you know, and most videos are like super edited. And, uh, you know, I was talking to In The Mix about this yesterday. Michael over there is an amazing guy, as you know. I do like the Valhalla Fabricio. It's a good, good point. It's very, very good. Um, I would definitely say the... Um, he got arrested for not panning Tom's, yeah. Um, I always do audience perspective but there is no rules if you want to do drummer's perspective that's great um so what was i saying yeah the thing about live streaming is like we're moving super super fast here and mike and i were talking about um you know really make it so that um you know if you want do make sure that you do um do your own YouTube channels. Help each other out. I think there's enough room here for everybody to get in here and help each other out. This is not like an exclusive room for people that are trying to just build businesses. This is about helping each other out. So please, 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 please do your own videos. Do your own stuff. Share it on here. Let's get this community going. Let's help each other. All right, I'm going to do one last giveaway, and then I have to go and work with Christina because I'm running late. It's already five past 12. I'm five minutes late. Slap. Um, we always talk about how the client comes first. Well, here I am using and abusing my poor client. She's, she's, she's like, she's all being apologetic to me and I'm five minutes late coming on 10. All right. Last question to win this course, to win this course. Um, this one is free, sorry, but to win the David course, I want to know one more thing. Um, yeah, absolutely not. You do try stuff. I mean, I've gone in there to solve problems. Thank you, um, Lem. I really appreciate it. Lem, you are a rock star. All right. So um, this is last but no means least. What can we do? Last but no, no means least. We talked about side chaining. We, I want to do one more mixed question. And I've done this before. I've done this before. But, and I asked this one question, but I want to rephrase it. Hmm. 
I've done favorite plugins before, but I want to know something a little bit more specific. And because there's been a couple of people asking about it, what is your favorite reverb? Because we just did, somebody was asking about Valhalla. I was just using Revolver. What is your favorite reverb? What is your favorite reverb? Oh, by the way, Anne, Andrew is paid. He's a paid employee. So he didn't do anything to my coffee. <laughs> um, so Andrew's paid. He's a part of our team. All right. So can you tell me what is, what is your favorite reverb plugin? And if you don't have one or if it's a stock plugin, that's quite fine. Lem says, hi, Christina. <laughs> Dave, they're all teasing me. Like, late for your own session, keeping the artist wait, working, uh, waiting. Da -da -dum 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 -dum. And then on this one, we're going to throw in a free Academy membership, Matt. This includes a free Academy membership on this one. So everybody answer. Free Academy membership. Free Academy membership. As well as... Ooh, Anne's very fancy with the TC Electronics DVR2. Uh, Steinberg, Little Plate, Valhalla. If you don't have one, it's okay. Say you don't have one. Say that you use stock ones. And this is for free Academy membership. So everybody watching. And, and before you go, please hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. It's really fantastic. I really appreciate it. I'm looking now. I haven't even looked at today's... 301 people view, uh, watching. Thank you ever so much. Oh, please like and share. I see there's been 260 likes and 301 li watching. Can we get it over 300? Please like and share. Remember, this is to win. This is to win a Academy membership as well as the David course. David is reshooting the video for it today. Dum de dum 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 de dum dum dum. Cardboard box with a mic in it. Nice, nice, Clint. Who won? Oh, John, you won. You just won a copy of Mixes and a, and a year's membership. So just send him an email. Fantastic. Um, Histro says, please subscribe. Yes, please subscribe. Please hit that. My bathroom in my hallway. Great answers. Great, great answers. 272. Can we take it up over 300? Can we do over 300? You cut only like once. Thank you, Martin. I appreciate it. All right. Webcam only. Here we go. And Eric is back. Christina beat you by. She was on time at 12. She beat you. Oh. Busted. Busted. But he's got a new haircut, everybody. Look at, look at the hair. Eric the hair. In fact, actually, both the Eric's have... Kind of gone for a similar look. Oh, E2, come on. E2 got there first. Oh, I think, I, I think it... And look, the glasses. Wait, whoa, whoa, wait there. Same first name. And they're, wear, and they're wearing similar shirts. Eric, but E1's not wearing shorts. Ah, you see. You don't want to see my legs. All right, everybody, have a marvelous time recording and mixing. Thank you ever so much. Thanks, everybody, that liked and shared. I really appreciate it. We'll be back again on Thursday. This song is coming out soon. Please like and share. If you haven't already, please subscribe. You all rock. We're doing more giveaways. We have more stuff. <laughs> uh, and by the way, David says your hair looks great. Diego wants to meet Christina. Uh, somebody has to ring out their wedges for their show. And apparently, Ken, the interns, uh, Ken, Ken says all the interns in Atlanta are named Andrew. Well, we only have, only one of the Eric's is an intern. Oh, Eric, Eric won. You just became an intern. Oh, oh my God. God. Oh, no. Did you hear that? <laughs> and, and everybody says that the shaved back and sides is the 2018 mullet. Yes, I think it is going to be. It's, what's, it's fine at the moment, but in five years' time, that haircut is going to be like the version of like the mullet from 2018. The around the sides. All right, everybody, have a marvelous time recording a mixer. I really, really appreciate all of you here. 
So it's been a wonderful, wonderful time. As I said, please like and share. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Go to Produce Like a Pro. Download all the free schnizzle we have. Start talking. The contest results, Robert Patterson's, are coming up on Peterson's are coming up on Friday. We are announcing on Friday the winners. Michael and I spent yesterday morning going through everything. Tomorrow morning, I mean, Friday morning, sorry. Friday morning, we will be announcing the winners. Tune back on Friday. Thank you, everybody. It's been a wonderful time. I really appreciate it. Have a marvelous time recording and mixing. See you again tomorrow. More coming.